Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thalmology Tutorials. Before discussing the diseases of the orbit, one must know in detail about the vascular anatomy of the orbit, that is both arterial supply as well as the venous drainage of the orbit. In order to understand the disease processes of the orbit efficiently, as well as it will help in the management aspect of the orbital diseases. So, in this video, I will be discussing about the arterial supply of the orbit. So, without much delay, let us begin our video on arterial supply of the orbit. Okay. So, the arterial supply of the orbit is mainly from the ophthalmic artery. Okay. So, this is the ophthalmic artery as you can see here, which is a branch of the internal carotid artery. Sometimes, this ophthalmic artery can also arise from the middle meningeal artery. So, if you look at this ophthalmic artery, it arises from the internal carotid artery as I told, just inferior medial to the optic nerve. Okay. Then it enters the orbit through superior orbital fissure, then travels in the orbital cavity and then enters the eye. Okay. So the course of this ophthalmic artery can be divided into the intracranial part, intracranicular part and the intraorbital part. The intracranial part up till it enters into the optic canal, intracranicular part the course of the ophthalmic artery along with the optic nerve in the optic canal then in the orbit and then enters into the eye. So, the first part is the intracranial part as you know. So, arises from the internal carotid artery inferior medially then turns to the inferior lateral side of the optic nerve in the subarachnoid space. Okay, That is the intracranial part of the ophthalmic artery. So, if you come to the optic canal, the course of the ophthalmic artery in the optic canal is like, so if you consider this as the optic canal and this is the optic nerve then this is the cranial side and this is the orbital side then the ophthalmic artery will be entering like this that is it lies lateral to the optic nerve and then courses along the inferior lateral side of the optic nerve and then turns medially on the orbital side this is the course of the ophthalmic artery in about 80 to 85 percent of the population but in remaining population this ophthalmic artery can lie just below the optic nerve here the ophthalmic artery lies between the dural and the arachnoid membrane okay and within the orbit the ophthalmic artery lies just medial to the optic nerve and there the space is in the extra dural okay so in the intracranial part of the ophthalmic artery it lies in the subarachnoid space when it enters the optic canal it lies in the dural and the arachnoid sheath and in and when it enters the orbital cavity it is extra dural okay so that is in brief about the course of the ophthalmic artery Next coming to the important branches of the ophthalmic artery, we have main 10 branches from the ophthalmic artery. As you all know, our artery that is the central retinal artery, then posterior ciliary artery, lacrimal artery, muscular arteries, posterior and anterior ethmoid, sorry, sorry for the spelling mistake, posterior and the anterior ethmoidal artery, supraorbital arteries, meningeal artery, medial palpebral artery, supratrochlear and the dorsal nasal artery which are the so let's discuss each branch of these ophthalmic artery in brief now okay coming to the central retinal artery so this is the first branch of the ophthalmic artery that is the central retinal artery as you can see here so the course of this central retinal artery is like it runs below the optic nerve around 1.25 centimeter behind the eyeball and then it pierces the dural sheath and the arachnoid sheath of the optic nerve and then enters the eyeball through the Lemana cribrosa. Okay, as you all know, this supplies the inner layers of the retina. The next is posterior ciliary artery. So, in the posterior ciliary artery, we have long posterior ciliary artery and the short posterior ciliary artery. So, the long posterior ciliary artery are two in number. So, the long posterior ciliary artery will supply the ciliary muscle, iris, and the anterior part of the choroid, whereas the short posterior ciliary arteries. So, these are the short posterior ciliary arteries which are around 15 to 20 in number and this is one more picture which is showing the course of the short posterior ciliary artery. This will supply the choroid and the optic nerve head. So, in the optic nerve head it will form a ring of zin. So, remember you, so you know the annulus of zin but this short posterior ciliary artery will form a ring of zin around the optic nerve with, with the pile arteries. Okay. In the ciliary arteries, we have one more artery that is cilio-retinal artery which is seen in 15 to 20 percent of the population. 
it enters the retina at the lateral border of the optic nerve and supplies the retina between disc and the macula then we have the lacrimal artery so this is the lacrimal artery what you are seeing so the course of the lacrimal artery is like it runs on the upper border of the lateral rectus muscle and then passes through the lacrimal gland here anteriorly and then sends terminal branches to the even eyelid as well as the conjunctiva so this lacrimal artery has four main branches that is recurrent meningeal artery zygomatic artery glandular as well as the lateral palpebral artery then coming to the muscular artery so in the muscular artery we have two main muscular branches that is the lateral muscular branch and the medial muscular branch lateral muscular artery will supply lps superior rectus and the superior oblique muscle whereas the medial muscular artery will supply medial rectus inferior rectus and the inferior oblique muscle coming to the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries so this is the anterior ethmoidal artery and the posterior ethmoidal artery and these will supply the posterior ethmoidal artery mainly supplies the posterior ethmoidal cells whereas the anterior ethmoidal artery will supply the remaining part of the ethmoidal cells the frontal sinus dura of the anterior cranial fossa lateral wall of the nose and the septum and even the skin of the nose coming to the supraorbital artery so this is the supraorbital artery it runs at the medial border of the superior rectus and the lps muscle it leaves the orbit through supraorbital foramen supraorbital artery will supply the eyebrow and the forehead and even small branches are given to superior rectus superior oblique and the lps muscle coming to the meningeal artery so these run through the superior orbital fissure and supply the middle cranial fossa coming to medial palpebral artery this medial palpebral artery arises below the pulvifor superior oblique muscle okay descends behind the lacrimal sac and pierces the orbital septum above and below the mpl form the peripheral and the marginal arterial arches coming to the supratrochlear artery this is a terminal branch of the ophthalmic artery so pierces the orbital septum above the pulley for the superior oblique muscle coming to the dorsal nasal artery this is also one of the terminal branches of the ophthalmic artery pierces the orbital septum passes between the mpl and descends to the nose gives branches to the lacrimal sac and the and then anastomosis with the facial artery so these are the branches of the ophthalmic artery so let me summarize it again so we have the central retinal artery posterior ciliary artery in that we have long posterior ciliary artery and the short posterior ciliary artery the lacrimal artery muscular arteries anterior and the posterior ethmoidal artery supra orbital artery meningeal arteries medial palpebral artery and and the supra trochlear and the dorsal nasal artery so these are the various branches of the ophthalmic artery hope this video on the ophthalmic artery or the arterial supply of the orbit is helpful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do like and share my video leave your valuable comments thank you so much